Hey, hey, it's ODB. We're getting ready to get into this episode of our Lifestyle Podcast, your mini truck and headquarters. However, we got to start with a huge shout out to Scraping the Coast. They've been with us since the beginning. Scraping the Coast is, as you can see on the screen here, the best show on the entire Gulf Coast. This is a mini truck Hall of Fame inducted event, and it's the 22nd annual this year in 2024. June 21st through the 23rd, they're in Biloxi, Mississippi. This is a destination event. There's plenty of places to eat, tons of stuff to do with the family. And don't forget the beach is just right across the way there. You can walk across the street, put your feet in the sand, check out the water. So much to do at this amazing event, Scraping with an IN the coast. Come join us out there this year, OLP, and so many amazing uh, vendors. You've got the a seed in, uh, air conditioned inside where you'll get to see some of the the, aw- the most awesome vehicles in the world, but also you got an entire show field that is out there on the Gulf Coast. So think about and plan now for Scraping the Coast 2024. More information to come. I am ODB and I approve this message. Now let's jump into the episode. Yo, 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 yo. It's our lifestyle podcast episode. 353. Thanks for coming back and rocking with us. I certainly appreciate all this continued support. I'm going to get into the reason why I had to re-record this episode a couple of times. If you're on YouTube, thank you so much for checking us out. If you're listening via a podcast app, please finish there and consider checking it out also on YouTube. That definitely helps our YouTube channel. Now, this episode 353, I had originally kind of intended to go over... Um, other things. I was going to have a guest. It just didn't work out this week. So we're going to do, I'm going to do an LST 2024 wrap up, but I'm also going to talk about some breaking news that came in about an hour ago. So this episode again is going to be very, um, I know it's, it's going to be titled very much the same. It's going to be LST. Some of you are going, Hey, I've seen enough of LST. Well, I haven't, there's definitely a lot to talk about. And I want to, for you guys to realize what an awesome time it is there. So uh, without further ado, I want to thank you heard just a moment ago. Our title sponsor, Scraping the Coast, will be out there the third weekend in June, Biloxi, Mississippi. Please join us there, scraping with an IN, the coast.com for more information. So on the episode overview, like I said, we're going to go through LST. I'm going to talk to you now about basically what 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 um i screwed up on and i attempted to do a live stream on tuesday that's my normal night to record i had kyle fannin on aka a k-dog i also had scotty the body join it's there's a learning curve and i didn't have everything set up correctly for the live stream through the software that i use and again that's something i got to own up to so we recorded a few people, uh, Anderpont, Michael Anderpont, I know Matt Stone, um, Bill from Local Rides, uh, a few folks did join us, and they were able to get in through the direct link to the software, but we didn't really hit the masses like we had hoped, and on top of that, I guess because I have a setting that I had set for Kyle, when the episode, when I went to download it, we had all of our audio and all of our video, except for K-Dog. He was literally like, when he was talking, it was like me listening to nothing. And I'm like, you guys are not going to enjoy that at all. So because of that, basically the next night I'm re-recording this and uh, Kyle is working. Everybody else has got stuff already planned. So I'm trying to pull the nose of the plane up here to get this episode out and kind of keep with our bi-weekly theme. Now, rest assured, I've got a ton of awesome guests lined up for this year, and I've got a few that I've really got to knock out the next week or two. You got to remember, too, with me doing these uh, video episodes, I also want to plan enough to be able to display to everybody what we're talking about. So that's another dynamic that I got to work through. The episode overview is brought to you by our family at Hamburg Weekend Wear. That's H-A-M-M-E-R-D. Weekendwear.com. Now, if you go out to their website, you're going to see that they have two new items. And you have to go to H-A-M-M-E-R-D, weekendwear.com. The reason why is if you would have had the old, I think in the past, they also had Hammered Apparel, and that's where it directed it to. 
That link doesn't work anymore, so you got to go to Hamburg with a D, weekendwear.com. They have their two new designs. They have the Follow the Drip and the uh, Nissan Hardbody. Hamburg Noir, N-O-I-R. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, they also have Kicking It at Kentucky Splash Event, which is, I think, uh, presented by Mini Truck and Magazine. They've got a lot of cool stuff. Visit their website for more. Let them know that OLP sent you. Okay. Next, I had breaking news, so I covered this whenever I recorded originally yesterday, so I'm not going to talk about the fact that I had to re-record again because I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the breaking news that we shared yesterday was over the weekend, Dave Kindig and team at Kindigit Designs, they won the Riddler Award, which is huge. I've never been to the Detroit Autorama. Some people say Autorama. I think that's usually what I say, but I heard Dave say Autorama. I don't know if it's like, you know, tomato, tomato. I guess so. But congratulations to them. If you are anywhere ingrained into kind of the hot rod culture or these different shows and whatnot, you know the Riddler Award at the Detroit Autorama is one of the biggest, baddest, most coveted awards in the industry. And uh, for them to win it was amazing. I saw a couple of videos pop up because I follow Ken Diggett Designs or Ken Diggett, if you will. And um, that car that he was talking about was just amazing. So congratulations. The breaking news is brought to you by AccuAir, our, our fine folks over there that we partner with so well, AccuAir, A-C-C-U-Air.com. They've got off-road, street cars, and trucks. They've got pretty much something for everyone. Uh, if you go out to their website, you'll see that they have the E-Level Plus ECU upgrades. They have the height sensors. They have so much more. Join their mailing list uh, from their main homepage. You can enter your email address. That way you can keep up with the latest news related to AccuAir. I run it on my personal vehicles, and I highly re- recommend it to friends and family all the time. Okay, so the general updates, uh, this is going to be all LST. And I guess since I already went through all this stuff, I'm not going to say what happened yesterday again, um, I should be able to go through it a little bit quicker. So we shall see. Now, If you're on YouTube, I'm just going to kind of go through. These are all of the photos that I took with different folks. Now, I wasn't able to take a photo with everyone, and that's definitely my apologies. I try to take photos with as many people as possible. And uh, the Cisco's always love linking up with them, Brandon and Missy and their son, good people. Uh, We always have great conversations. Uh, Severed New York, all of the kinfolk was there. Uh, Chris Stone, uh, great guy. He... You know, he and I always talk about his forerunner and just awesome stuff. Uh, Nathan Buchanan, he is the guy behind Sick Cars and Trucks, Sick Sick Slam Trucks, and Sick Mini Trucks. So if you guys don't know Nathan, uh, he's a good dude. Uh, He has, he and I met years ago through Lincoln's because he's in the Lincoln's. He bought a Lincoln sticker from me. And uh, we want to try to do some collab stuff. He's doing big things. Uh, For those that don't know, I think he's even going to partner with Richard Rawlings. Uh, is what he was telling me, and do some of his uh, show coverage, which was great. This is Nelson from Relaxed Atmosphere. Uh, Nelson, uh, I'm describing Nelson. Uh, he's standing next to my truck when I went through the judging lanes, and he had the gray Mazda with the Pat Maxwell paint job where the inner, uh, the doors were, um, had all the graphics on the inside. So pretty cool. He was also part of that cover uh, that, that main photo that Courtney did, rest in peace, to Courtney uh, at Texas Heatwave with all of the trucks. His Mazda was in that as well. Uh, Emma, uh, no regrets, the big homie. He had the forerunner. Uh, some of the severed kinfolk, including Patrick Reed. Uh, here you got Hank Norris. Brandon Burrell, so it was cool to link up with street trucks. They had a booth. Uh, Brandon and Caitlin uh, Krogan, I, I always want to mess that up, and I'm, I apologize, homie, but they always come through and slap hands. They're good people. A couple, again, photos with Nathan again. Uh, here is Anderpont. So Michael, Anderpont, uh, and uh, Brian Ellis. So good people. They come through. They turned us on to an awesome restaurant out there. So I'm just going to kind of go through these. It won't be the whole episode, but I want to reinforce a few people that I did link up with. Don Garland Jr., he owns Steel Flame now. Uh, super cool. Love, you know, hanging out with him. Uh, West from NC. Uh, this is uh, Chris, or excuse me, Jeff from Car Shows with a Z, 
and he does all of the official photos that Lonnie and Radar typically share from the Instagram account. I think they've even went as far as doing um, some videos uh, post uh, the show, so that's kind of cool. This is Phil, and um, you know Phil's a good dude. He does all of the awards, and he's uh, Phil built up in uh, Canada. Uh, Chris, I got a chance to slap hands with him again, the big homie from Louisiana Classics. They've got just such a cool Instagram page, and um, you know their whole thing is no dues, just cruise. And this is his Rose car, which is just phenomenal. It's on Detroit Steel Wheel Co.'s. Uh, Jenna Lee's got her award, and uh, shout out to her, and thanks to, again, Welch's Chop Shop. What we ended up doing was uh, our OLP honors for 2020, uh, 2023, we gave out three of those awards, uh, including Jenna Lee, Michelle Boone, and Randy Frederick. At this event, the rest will be given out uh, at the Mini Nats. Uh, Grant Cox, I talked with him earlier, good dude. He's been a photographer a long time in our scene. Took a couple photos with him. Matt Stone, so one of the things that we joked about was, uh, if you're looking on YouTube right now, I've got this Whataburger hat on. And Matt bought me this hat at Eastbound Get Down. He ordered it online, and he said, he kind of bamboozled me. He said, hey, what hat do you uh, like on this site? You know, And I'm thinking he's going to buy a new hat. And I, I tell him, hey, this one's pretty cool. He says, all right, put your address in. And I'm like, no, you're not buying me a hat. Well, he ends up telling me, do not come to Texas with an In-N-Out Burger hat on. So, of course, what do I do? I come to Texas with an In-N-Out Burger hat on. I see him on Friday, kind of does the sneak attack, and I say, of course, I've got the Whataburger hat over here too. So uh, we had a lot of fun uh, messing around, and uh, he's a good dude, man. He came to Eastbound to get down this year, and it was pretty awesome. Uh, we got Diggity Dom and DJ Mays. And I'm going to jump over here real quick. Okay. Uh, we have Subculture Homie. Um, we also have, uh, and shout out, man, thank you so much for all of the the support. I mean, you watch all of the flip throughs, and we just, we just you know, loved hanging out with you. Sometimes you just don't have enough time to chat. Uh, sketchies, of course. Uh, this was cool. Marlin had the Nissan hard body that was pretty much door, excuse me, Nissan Frontier that was on the cover of Mini Trucking. This is uh, Fito. So, this guy is standing over here, and Marlon and I are about to take a photo, and he's like, I start talking with this guy, Fito, F-I-T-O, and he says, man, I used to be in Severed. I led the Palm Springs chapter. Years ago, I left California. I moved to Texas. Really kind of got out of the scene. I'm here at Lone Star just to check it out, and I wanted to come see the Severed vehicles, and I'm just standing here. And we're like, wow, that's pretty cool. So got a chance to take a photo with him, Marlon and I, of course, and then uh, Fito in the middle. Uh, Neil Brown, always a good dude, love hanging out. Brian from Grinder TV. Uh, this is Joe from C10 Vatos. This is his awesome wife, Morgan. She's great. Uh, they're in Severed, Arizona. And, of course, here's the quadruple OG Joe. Uh, we have uh, two of the Rodells, so Rob and his son Jackson. Jake. Uh, Phil, that used to be at BC Fab, uh, but he's got his own YouTube channel and stuff going on. Blaine from Sever, Tracy, his wife, Michelle Watts, uh, Gage Magazine, uh, Grant again. Uh, this is cool. This is Trip. Trip had the freaking weekend hat on. And of course, that event is going to be in September in Biloxi, about three months almost to the day after scraping the coast. So we're going to be out there at the freaking weekend. He had one of these hats. And of course, I said, hey, I saw it on Shark Tank. And, uh, of course, he goes, yeah, that's where um, I got the idea. Uh, this was some good kinfolk. I think she was uh, – Kyle and I talked about these folks. The 16-year-old daughter built a SEMA truck, which is amazing, and they were just awesome to chat with. And, you know, these are just some of the things that I love most about going to these shows because it's all of the people there. You know, Ronnie has the good coined phrase, you know, the trucks are cool, the people are cooler, Right. And to me, I, I truly believe that. I mean, even though I didn't coin that phrase, I, I think I've always lived by that. And, and part of that comes from, you know, my dad, the big homie from United by Trucks. Here's Emma again. Randy, of course, with the hat that reminds me of the Dumb and Dumber. Uh, when uh, Jim Carrey's character gets the big hat, I always love these hats. And that was super cool. Eddie and Gracie May. I sometimes get that confused. Daryl Poe. Uh, it was always good talking with Eddie, by the way. Uh, there's Chris again with his car. Some of the folks from Canada. 
This was Dane. So Dane, if you happen to see this man, great conversations. You know, it's cool that people will come by and we'll end up just chatting about the old times. And those are the good conversations that we had. Solomon, of course, all of his success with Ford era. And, uh, you know, he ended up having a hiccup on the way home, which I'll talk about. Uh, this is Joe uh, for anybody that is uh, watching on YouTube. Joe built the red Toyota that Waka now has, and he's working on something new. Uh, Tom Jenkins, we have not stock photography, John Jackson. Uh, this was Mr. Uresti, which is Naomi's father from Mad Gear. Super cool dude. Uh, Reina Brothers, uh, the homie from local finesse Japan was there. Uh, Chris Stone, a couple of guys, I forget their names, but they were old school mini truckers. They came by right at the right time. Todd Robinson was there. Uh, Stuart from KIK. Jarrett from Lone Star Throwdown. And some photos I took with Don. Some of the other homies that came from the West. A lot of people, I'd say a good amount of people, said that they used to live in California. Now they live in Texas. This was cool. She had a Snoop Dogg shirt on. This is Alicia. Good people. Alamo Customs. Switch suspension. Got a chance to link up with them. Slap hands real quick. And then we had uh, a chance to take some of the top 10 photos. And then this is the big homie that uh, always follows us on Instagram. And he's a good dude from Texas. So um, I know that was kind of like a data dump of just a lot of stuff. But those are some of the memories that I wanted to kind of reinforce. And for me, being a visual person, I can look at that at that album on my Facebook. Now, if I called your name and you're like, hey, where are the photos? Go on my Facebook and look at the LST Kinfolk album and you could check it out so i talked to kyle uh, about the drive to the show and kyle took his c20 it's the second time he's driven it there and he talked about you know getting nine ten miles a gallon uh, i think he spent a little over a thousand in fuel each way and uh, he had a successful time i know for me the prep was big because i really didn't tell a lot of people that i was going to bring my truck i kind of wanted to just do it you know vic always talks about uh, you know, you know, don't talk about it, be about it. And I think that's something I've also tried to live by. You know, I haven't been able to, to, you know, to maybe manifest every single thing I've wanted to do, but, you know, I try to just do stuff and, and, and not, you know, talk about it as much. But what I ended up doing was I make a list in my phone and these lists become pretty, um, you know, near and dear to my heart because I kind of re really reinforce that, what I want to do is get through everything, right? I, I want to detail my truck. I want to make sure I'm bringing all the tools I need. I don't want to get stranded. If I have a flat, you know, I want to have, you know, the impact and the jack and all of the stuff. And what I end up doing is I, I kind of just curate a list in my uh, phone notes, right? So by the time Mike pulled up on Wednesday at about 11 to 11.30 a.m., I was clicking that last check mark and it felt good because I really prepared and the way I see it as I get older as well is I feel like if I over-prepare and I went to the show and I came home, had no issues, Kirk let me use his trailer, which included two spares. I checked all the tire pressure there, and, of course, before I left, I had the spares also aired up. I kind of felt like, God forbid, I had an issue. Dude, I'm as prepared as I can be. That year that I went to scraping, and although I had – thought that I had newer tires, you know, they had just sat a while and they must not have liked it. And I had that big 42 foot trailer and, you know, I ended up blowing five tires, you know, one there, five, com four coming back. And it, w it was a nightmare, but as frustrating as that can be, you got to learn from those situations, right? Just like last night I tried to go live and it was just like a lack of experience using the software and I didn't click all the right stuff. You know, you can't, get down about it and go, damn, man, it's the end of the world because it's not, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I just look at it and say, I'm fortunate, uh, that I was able to get to the show. Mike and I to get there and back. That was really a, a huge thing for me. I wanted to get there and back safe. And I did. Um, and we didn't have any major hiccups. You know, the, the worst part of it is my truck has a smaller gas tank and I still haven't spent the money to get the Titan, tank they make bigger tanks and we had to stop excessively for fuel uh and i was stopping again trying to be prepared i was stopping like when we get to a quarter tank which is like nothing in my truck because it's such a small tank it's like i don't even want to tell you how many times we have to stop it's frustrating so 
you know, my truck's going to go to one more show and uh, I'm going to probably put it up for a while. You know, that's just where I'm at. I mean, I kind of said that a few years ago, but then I got through the bucket list uh, two, two years ago with Jimmy doing the punch list rather, not a bucket list. And I, I brought it to three shows that year. I took last year off and then, you know, here I am bringing it back to a couple of shows this year. But, um, you know, I'm ready to put the pedal down on some other things. And uh, it's been cool to get all of the, the good word from so many people at LST with Bada Bing. Uh, speaking of the drive to the show, again, for the most part, it was uneventful other than the, the fuel stops, as I mentioned. The event itself was amazing. So I, I showed you a lot of the people that I got a chance to meet and interact with. I did meet Anthony as well, Ant. Um, from RA, and I, I, I hate that I didn't get a photo with him. Uh, I think I was coming back from like being gone from the booth a couple hours, and I had to get back. Uh, so I just was kind of in a little bit of a rush. But, you know, if there was anyone that I didn't mention, you know, please know that if we chatted or slapped hands or even if it was a quick conversation, that's my favorite part. You know, I may not remember the name, but I'll remember the conversation, and I'll remember the truck if we talked about it, and, and that's what I value kind of most. The event itself was just unreal. Uh, my number on Bada Bing was like 2137 or something like that. So you can imagine they, they do the pre-reg for 2K, but then they have some of the support vehicles and some of the vendor booth type stuff. So they, they will um, kind of go over a little bit that 2K, and there was no extra space. I mean, anywhere I went – there was no pocket of emptiness. I mean, there were trucks literally. I mean, it, it kind of felt like going to a football game, parking in the parking lot because there was so much there. And the win is that you really get your money's worth. I mean, it's an, a tremendous value. Uh, there's so many trucks to see. The, the challenging part is, and I talked to Kyle about this, I didn't get a chance to see everything there. And I, and I know you would say, well, yo, ODB, you got there Thursday. Well, yeah, we got there. We set up. Not really a show day, kind of floated around a little bit, did a few things. We're like, before then, it's time to go to lunch. Then on Friday, I did get a lot of coverage. On Saturday, I got a lot. And Sunday, I got a lot. And I got a ton, but I didn't get everything. And I did put my eyes on every mini truck. You know, some I didn't get a chance to really do a video of. But there were a lot of mini trucks there. And I got to thank anyone, even if your truck was under construction, for bringing it out because Radar has been very vocal. Hey, we want more mini trucks. You know, we're old mini truckers. We love mini trucks. It's not just C10s. It's not just full sizes. It's not just OVS. So congratulations to anybody that brought a truck out. I was glad I brought mine. It had been 10 years almost to the same weekend. And it was just a great feeling. And I even look back to February 2014. I didn't even take a lot of photos. And, and like, if you guys know me at shows... I'm usually taking hundreds of photos and hundreds of videos. It's just insane, right? I think I have the two terabyte iPhone because I take that much stuff. But I think in, in 10 years ago, I just, you know, OLP wasn't in existence. And I was there. It was a long drive. You know, the truck was kind of coming down from its high of being out for almost two years at that point. And I just was like, yeah, I didn't take a lot of photos. I just enjoyed myself at that event. And, and I haven't really done that a lot the last 25 plus years, which is crazy to think. But regardless, I will tell you, LST, just a tremendous time. I can't thank the team enough. I'll give you guys an update here just a moment on the show. Uh, the drive home, again, was uneventful, uh, which which I appreciate, right? I mean, everybody wants to get home safe. I set the cruise control at a certain speed. Um, I, I'm happy to say I drove all the way there and all the way back, so Mike can't talk any crap. He usually is the one that drives, with all due respect, and uh, it was cool that he got to kind of dumb out a little bit in the truck and just um, do the damn thing. If you get a chance um, and you want to, you know, you like the stuff I'm doing, uh, Google ODBs with an S, ODBs Substack. Uh, or you can Google ODB's life. Uh, I have a sub stack on there and it's free and I'm going to, I'm posting more on there. Uh, I'll do, I'm going to do some mini trucking stuff. I'm going to do some Lincoln attic stuff, but I did a post regarding the challenges that LST faced post the event. Now I got home at 1130 AM Eastern on Monday. Bike had an extra three hour ride. I rested a little bit, I unpacked, and by the time Tuesday came, I hadn't really seen any of the madness that apparently started to transpire online with 
the stuff that happened not at the show, but in or around that area that was uh, causing concern for the local uh, municipalities, right, and jurisdictions. So DJ May, shout out to him. He had texted me and he said, hey, we might need to kind of get behind this. So I went out on, of course, social media and it was everywhere. And, um, you know, the good thing about not being on social media is you don't see all that. You know, you just live your life. And I haven't been on Facebook as much, right? So it's kind of like, okay, I'm over here doing what I got to do. I don't know the craziness that's going on in the world. The bad part is something that's this close and near and dear to what we love, we kind of want to be in the loop, right? Especially me doing a podcast. So I kind of needed to know about it. And looking at all the comments and stuff, you know, it was apparent who made um, some of these dumb choices, right? These, these group of folks. But what I ended up doing was I wrote a sub stack. It, it's like a five minute read or less. And it kind of talks about my thoughts regarding this. Now, the ironic thing is I'm recording now on March 6th and Lonnie and Radar have now since met today with the local authorities. And I'm going to give you that update here uh, in just a second. Now, uh, if you check out, I, th- I think it's still worth, you know, I, I think it's still worth reading the sub stack, you know, after, after the fact, you know, you might go, well, you know, you're going to give this update, you know, who really cares, but the sub stack still going to provide you some of my thought processes. You know what I mean? Uh, if you're on YouTube, you're going to see this. I'm sharing my screen. I want to thank, uh, this is from LST. I want to thank Jason Millsaps and the team at the Montgomery County office of Homeland security and emergency management slash Terry Strozier uh, and her team at Lone Star Convention and Expo Center for putting this meeting together. So we heard Homeland Security and a lot of us, like the bell was ringing like, man, really? And it it was that serious. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it goes on to say that, you know, most people knew that there was going to be a meeting today on March 6th. They, um, there are going to be some changes for the event. There is a possibility, although the event is on for next year, there is a possibility that they can cancel the event. Like if, if something got out of hand on Friday next year, which I don't anticipate happening, they could kind of pull the lever and say, look, the show is done, right? We don't anticipate that happening, but that shows the dire uh, necessity for all of us to, to, you know, to, to speak up if we're seeing any kind of shenanigans, I do think there's probably going to be a heightened awareness. I mean, I don't think. I mean, I'm pretty certain there's going to be a heightened awareness next year with some of these spots, making sure that these uh, meetups aren't taking place. But they did kind of go on to say the uh, the issue isn't with the group of people that hang out at the hotels. You know, lo- many truckers have long stayed out late, having some cold beverages, hanging out, not causing an issue. And that's not an issue. They go on to say the issue is the destruction of businesses and the lack of respect for authority. The incidents that we were made aware of was patrol unit tire being slashed, urinating on or around patrol units, attempting to remove an individual from a patrol unit that was in custody, stealing mobility scooters from the business, stealing the stop signs, damaging the landscaping, and the list went on. It's disheartening to hear people behave this way. So... Listen, we can blame a certain certain type of uh, crowd, but I, I'm not here to do that. What I'm here to do is say, look, if you're with anybody, uh, any of your crew, uh, which I, I'm assuming most people that are here, you're not going to be hanging out with people that are going to be doing destructive things. But listen, we're old school mini truckers, and a lot of us have been around a long time, and I know a lot of us have felt like to have fun over the course of time. And although I would argue we haven't done anything near what was just described, you know, many of us can think back to Showfest, you know, that 2006, I didn't go that year, but 05. And things just kind of getting, you know, you got these large crowds, you got a lot of alcohol, you got, you know, people acting a fool, everybody kind of wanting to be funny and do different things. And, you know, that show ends up getting canceled, it comes back, right? Uh, Ruben and I were talking the other day, you know, there was another show, uh, I'm sure a ton over the course of time, uh, river runs and stuff that an incident happens, not even associated with the show, but it was on the premises. So then that ends up, I'm sure most of you can go, yeah, I remember such and such show got shut down. Uh, I remember hearing stuff about Nopi years ago. I don't know if it was true about something that happened under the stands, uh, at the Atlanta motor speedway. So 
at the end of the day, this event had nothing to do with the show. But you could imagine a local jurisdiction, you know, them putting their foot down saying, look, you have an event in this greater area and it's bringing in a lot of people. And some places may not care about the economic impact to their region. They might just say, look, uh, the people that, uh, you know, contribute to our campaign might own this business right here, right? These people that have tons of money that don't care about, you know, maybe a 5 or $10 million impact to the region because the region may or may not need it. You know, I'm not here to say whether they do or don't, but I'm just saying the local authorities and some of the stuff I put in my Substack, they're paying attention to this stuff, whether it's good or bad. So I would highly encourage, again, next year and really at any event, um, I was at a couple of events. I don't want to give specifics, but I was at an event one night, and we were at this little bar downstairs. And after the bar closed, you know, people were doing certain things. And I spoke up. You know, I'm like, come on, man. Like, really? Like, and I, I, I removed myself from that situation. And, you know, some people ended up having to pay some money to fix that problem. Um, I was also at a different show. And, you know, it there were some people acting up, like, in the – in the lobby, you know, and they just were like pissing off the staff, you know, and they were just really, really, really pissing them off. And it's like, okay, look, I mean, you got to grow up. You know what I'm saying? Like I look at it and say, if this is the host hotel and you're nagging the staff so bad, I mean, what are they going to say to management? And then the next year that show promoter is like, Hey, do we got the same show rate? Nope. We don't want you guys. So look, I know it sounds like I'm being the, you know, the progressive dad, you know, from the progressive commercials. And, you know, I, I'm sure I could do a whole episode with dad jokes and things like that. But at the end of the day, dude, if we lost Lone Star Throwdown, anything is possible at that point. Any show, you know, and what I want to do going into mini nats. And by the way, I'm wearing my mini nat shirt. You know, Jason Bell and I talked a little bit uh, prior to LST. And I want to get him on hopefully the next episode and talk a little bit about the impact of these sideshows, which I talk about in my Substack post that started in California in the 80s, okay? The stuff that you see on Instagram with people doing the donuts and stuff, that is called a sideshow in in California. They started to be called meetups and things like that. And what's happened is these different cities are enacting ordinances. And they're saying that, hey, if you stop traffic and you do a burnout, that could be considered uh, a nuisance, right? Now you're taking over the street. So w- we have to be careful. And what I really want to do is reinforce the message. I mean, listen, I know everybody loves America. We all love a good burnout. But I'm calling on everyone that's listening to this. And again, we'll get more information from Jay Bell. But I'm pretty certain, you know, we don't want to be in a mini Nats. We don't want to be there in Maggie Valley and doing burnouts or anything like that because Anytime you're you're causing a disturbance in the streets, and if there's ordinances that are impacted, you know cops can start taking action. And in some places in the country, they can impound cars. Uh, many of us on the East Coast don't know anything about this, but low riding has been banned in many cities and jurisdictions in California for a long time. I talked about this several months back when some of these ordinances are um, the bans are being lifted now, and they're you know that whole low riding is not a crime is really a a big thing. You know, there are certain areas where if you cruise once and you cruise a second time, anything past that second time, they can pull you over and they could impound your car. So none of us want to get to a position where, you know, you pull up somewhere and something's going down and they're like, okay, you're guilty by association. You're like, I just pulled up here. I don't know what's going on. But at the end of the day, I'm calling on everyone, even at mini Nats, like, Let's not do burnouts. I think they're fine with dragging. I want to get all of that from Jason Bell, you know, when we have him on soon. But let's all just try to keep kosher, man. We don't need to do anything crazy. We just want to cruise our trucks low and have a good time. Right? You know what I'm saying? The general updates, which includes Lone Star Throwdown, is brought to you by, ironically enough, Lone Star Throwdown. Join us next February, usually that third weekend in February, Conroe, Texas. Uh, there's a uh, In-N-Out Burger, a Stone's Throw Away. I know Matt Stone will love that. And um, we hope that you will join us. Again, it's an amazing event. And thank you so much to Lonnie Radar, Jared, and the wives as well for everything that they did to, to really keep this event you know, on the docket for 2025. Okay, so... 
Next, we got the trivia with B- Ms. Ike. And if you did tune into the live stream the other night, for the few people that did, uh, this one is going to be an easy one per Matt Stone. And I was going to ask Mike in the famous 1980s commercial. So this goes out to the, the mini truck and syndicate out there, all of the listeners. In the famous 1980s commercial, what was declared the best part of waking up? What was declared the best part of waking up? I know it was an easy one. The reason why I thought of that is, you know, back in the day, a lot of us would take those old tin cans or whatever they're made out of. I think they're tin. And we would use them for bolts and stuff. And I have one, of course, in my shop. I have a plastic one and a, and a metal one. And, uh, of course, that's Folgers. And the whole point of it was is advertising really does work. If you think about some of those things, those jingles or those commercials that kind of ever play in our head or maybe you haven't heard it in forever. Um, I love the little things that were at the end of the com- at the end of the cartoons, you know, those little jingles that, you know, were the different um, sit, ubu, sit, good dog, and the dog barks. You know, those little things are like forever stuck in my mind. And, you know, it's kind of the way advertising works or a branding, if you will. So, yes, the best part of waking up, according to the coffee company, is Folgers in your cup. And, uh, again, it's, it's kind of cool to think about, uh, how far coffee's come. I'm not a huge coffee drinker. That's a fun fact about me, but I will tell you, um, those K cups have kind of taken over the world. I know so many people go to Dunkin' and Starbucks and all that stuff and spend a lot of money on those drinks. I do get one every once in a blue moon, but, um, it's ironic to think how, you know, those old coffee makers from like the eighties that I think of with back to the future, uh, that opening sequence and, uh, all of that stuff, how things have changed. And, you know, a lot of it used to be the metal cans or tins or whatever. Now it's plastic. So it is what it is. Trivia with Mike this week brought to you by our kinfolk at Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals, also known as Mini Nats. For short, the 30th annual is going down this April. You'd have to be sleeping under a rock not to know about it. If you're on the fence, book those flights and get out to Maggie Valley, North Carolina, find a place to crash. You're going to have an amazing time. We love Jay Bell and his team and what they do. Uh, the merchandise is going to go quick, so we highly suggest that you get a hold of it as soon as you can or have a homie or club bank pick it up for you. Mini Nats, huge shout-out. Okay, the rest of this episode, I'm going to go a little quicker, and I know some of the longtime listeners are going to be like, yo, man, Jay, it's been two weeks in a row. You know, Tim and Randy, I know they're going to chime in and go, yo, dog. Man, we need give us another hour, man. We're, we need a two-hour deal. Believe me, we're going to be back to that hopefully soon. Uh, next, we got the scene updates. So I just wanted to reinforce a couple of things. I know Forbidden Fantasy is coming up. So to everybody, I think Matt Stone from Texas is going out. Um, everybody going out to the Avi, they are back. Um, Forbidden Fantasy, FFF uh, for short. They are on Instagram. You can find more information. I'm sure most of you by now, if you're going to make it out there, uh, you know about it. But that is going down real soon. Also, pre-registration open for last resort. So I got a chance to see Stuart at LST. And, of course, Stuart is behind KIK. And they have a show, Last Resort. That's October 18th, 19th, and 20th in Jennings. Louisiana, and the reason why I mention this is because a few shows have decided to do their pre-reg now, and you go, well, man, why now? Well, everybody else is doing a pre-reg, so you got to get ahead of that. Uh, I know a lot of the Aftermath Florida guys from Mike's crew and uh, the Aftermath kinfolk here in Florida, they go to it, so it's going to be pretty cool. I know Oregon's new NU main event had to be canceled. Definitely hard, sorry to hear this. I know there are some shows in that region uh, which is super cool uh, to see Craig Braid and all of those guys with Sit and Pretty bring back their event. That stuff is, of course, still on, so we'll talk more about that as we get through the summer. Shout out to Craig Braid, a.k.a. C.B. Cooper. Right, Craig? Uh, those were the only scene updates this week. Of course, we covered a lot with uh, Lone Star Throwdown. That was earlier. Uh, the scene updates is brought to you by the Kinfolk at Garage Gear Clothing garagegearclothing.com. They have free options for shipping, or you can hit them up at one of these events like Benny Nats. They have some very cool merch. They have a new booth, uh, which is a new trailer, and they have just a super cool setup. Go show Garage Gear Clothing some love and hit them up. 
Hut one, hut two, hut three, hut. Old Dirty Ballard live and uncut. Hey, the only thing I got this week is please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch this. Even if you listen to it, you know, later when you, you sit down at your desk, if you can pull it up and just stream it, even if you're p- half paying attention to it, uh, it really helps us. The YouTube channel continues to grow. I'm going to put a lot of time and effort in here. And, you know, I want this to be where everything lives. You know, all the flip throughs, every magazine, all the stuff right here on the OLP YouTube channel. So um, if you want to show some love, definitely a subscribe uh, is free. Uh, You can also do a super thanks, and there are some options on there uh, for the different levels that you can pay a monthly fee. The second tier up and higher, I think it's $4.99 or higher per month, you're going to get access to our videos early and more stuff. So uh, we'll be doing a lot more live content. And I will continue to show love to those that become kind of members, if you will, I think is the right term. Try to remember all this stuff, subscriptions, follows, members, super thanks, thanks, a whole bunch of stuff. But if you like what we're doing, YouTube, follow us, subscribe, whatever it's called. Show us some love. If you want to go above and beyond, send us a thanks, which is a couple bucks. Or you can also, of course, become a member and you'll get access to the videos and more early. ODB Live and Uncut brought to you by the kinfolk at Colorado Custom Wheels. Arguably the best billet wheels in the industry. I would argue the best customer service out of any company. I've used Colorado Custom for many years. They've been around 30 plus years. Colorado Custom with no S dot com. Uh, next, we got the mini truck and syndicate updates. I know Matt Knup, uh, I just saw today, right before I started this uh, video, that you turned 50, the big 5-0. Congratulations. I appreciate you being a supporter. Uh, you're a great dude. You know your mini truck in history. I l- always love talking with you. My only regret is we never have enough time to really finish some some super awesome conversations. Uh, I want to say congrats to Bobby Arkwright, a longtime supporter of OLP. He is a granddaddy. Uh, with another, um, I forget if it's his first or multiple grandchildren, but congrats on the grandbaby. I saw that via Instagram. And happy born day to Ed Testerman, one of the the other big supporters. Many of you are supporters. These are just the three that I happened to see uh, before I started this. So uh, congrats. Mini Truck and Syndicate updates brought to you by Bill and team at Local Rides. That's L-O-C-A-L Rides with a Z, magazine.com. Uh, Hit them up. They have subscriptions that are on sale right now. Also, do not forget they have individual issues around $9 a piece. Uh, Even if you want to show them some love, order one issue. OLP's got an ad in there. Love what they're doing. Super high quality, especially for kind of a homegrown publication. Big shout-outs to Bill and team at Local Rides. That's Local Rides with a Z, magazine.com. Podcast updates. Leave us a rating. Also, be on the lookout for Friday. we would have loved to wait a few extra days for Hamburg's pre-sale to end, but we've got something we've been brewing up and we got to get it in the works because we're going to do a promo code. If you want to pick it up at Lone Star or excuse me, at mini Nats. Okay. So it's going to be one of our biggest and baddest launches ever. We hope that you can support what we're doing. Even if you can't do all of the other stuff I was talking about, if you can buy a shirt, that certainly helps us. It helps us, you know, afford to do these pre-sales, uh, and, you know, these orders, if you will. So leave us a rating via any podcast app and then also look out on Friday for what's new at OLP. We're going to give out the remaining of our OLP Honor Awards at Mini Nats, so the rest of the crew will be there. And, again, congrats to Randy, Genelise, and Michelle Boone. They received their awards that were produced by Welch's Chop Shop at Lone Star Throwdown. So, We'll see the rest of you, including Brett, who owns Stranger. He got the Vanguard Award. Uh, The truck did, rather, but, you know, you could imagine Pascal's kind of moved on, and Brett is the new curator. He's done a lot to Stranger. So, of course, he will be the recipient of the Vanguard Award for Stranger. Uh, My last closing words, I want to thank our title sponsor, Scraping the Coast. Again, scraping with an I-N, thecoast.com for more information. We love being out there on uh, Biloxi in the summer because they've got the Coliseum and it is air conditioned. So it's a, it's a great time. Uh, there's a lot of people to thank uh, Chris Burns at CNS Metalworks. If you need AccuAir or Universal Air or just different products, uh, you can hit up uh, CNS Metalworks on Instagram or their website. You can contact Chris. He will take care of you. Uh, and thank you to all of our sponsors. We appreciate the continued support. 
I know it's another shorter video uh, episode rather, but check us out on YouTube. Again, I'm putting a lot more time and effort there. And that's where I think my future is going to be trying to grow that as much as possible. That's really where my passion's at. About 106 days or so to Scraping the Coast. We'll see you out there. Stay on the rise, everyone. And, oh, by the way, this weekend, it's Daylight Saving Time, not Savings. I know a lot of people make that mistake. Daylight Saving Time ends for most of us. It's kind of crazy. There's different areas that don't participate. I think Arizona is one. Hawaii is the other. There's other pockets of different Native uh, American areas and reservations that don't participate either. But what that means is this weekend, going into Sunday, you're going to spring ahead. I think technically at 2 a.m., we jump ahead an hour. And uh, it kind of sucks, but I'll tell you, I want the daylight. I want to be able to get outside and do things after work. And uh, daylight saving time ends. Hopefully, we can stop the madness soon <laughs> switching these damn clocks. I appreciate each and every one of you guys and ladies. We out you.